Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you on this daily OPSC MCQ series and mission 2020 we are taking here. Second of July it is and uh, important current affair based issues are there and some study portions uh, issues are also there but the context is there in the current affair section from the newspapers like Hindu, Indian Express and the PIB sources all I am considering here so there is no need to worry about the sources. They are perfectly reliable sources and the data is also very important so from science and technology section i'm taking some questions here and uh, these are extremely important and in the news so the study iq's marathi channel is also launched and it's all the dedication and the effort of study iq that has reached up to this level and these are the courses affordable courses by study iq below the video all the description is given you can call on these numbers and uh, uh, you can uh, access the website also there the chat section is available PDF you will get here on this Facebook group and this uh, telegrams link is also given there and you must be knowing about the study IQ's telegram link and you can follow me on Instagram also and this is the my telegram channels link so everywhere you will find the PDF so no need to uh, to uh, be worried about that and uh, just go through the video and then go through the pdf that's very very important because the compilation of the information is extremely important question one recently in news what is tri netra or three netra we can as we can call it it's a drone warning system or imaging system or the nuclear submarine tell me in the comment section you can uh, give the answer you see i'm telling you this lesson is not a live session it's actually a premiere so you can uh, uh, uh put messages there you can do live chatting and all but i'm not there uh, uh at that time actually so uh, if sometimes uh, i'm there then i give a reply otherwise uh, uh it's it's a premiere it's not a live session actually so that's the case so uh please do not be miffed if i do not reply any time so according to the schedule these lessons are uploaded it's trinetra it's a modern technology and to assess the loco pilots in the railways because uh, in the foggy condition or maybe due, uh, due to temperature uh, some changes in the tracks uh, they happen many times and maybe some obstruction is there so a lot of accidents happen with indian railways and this imaging system based on uh, radar assist and the uh, infrared technology ultra uh, imaging technology and camera systems are also uh, uh, there in this system so this is a imaging system for assisting loco pilots so C is the answer here. Since 2002-03, this issue of uh, developing a particular system is going on, but they failed uh, after that. And again, uh, they tried and they developed this uh, uh, Trinetra or the Trinetra system. So it's a kind of a third eye for the Indian trains. Okay. And in a foggy condition, they will identify any kind of obstruction which is there on the tracks. So they will check the smoothness there. So different kind of uh, 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 waves are there. And they are using them like ultrasonic waves they are using infrared waves uh, they are using and uh, on the basis of those kind of imaging it is checking the obstruction there and that's why it can work in the foggy conditions also okay next question lessa uh, I told you about it uh, uh, I think twice in the past and uh, you tell me is it a satellite by NASA is it related to NASA I'm, I am giving you a hint it is related to NASA but not directly they have a mission for moon and by 2024 they want this particular technology to be there because lunar man missions will be there so it is helpful there so it's not a super bug what is a super bug super bug is a totally resistant bacteria where any antibiotic is not working so that's super bug and it's actually a lunar evacuation system assistance there so that's the case an emergency system for astronauts there so c is the answer it is not any kind of act it's a emergency evacuation system there on the lunar surface because lunar surface is very much risky anything may hit you directly because there is nothing to hinder there there is no atmosphere like uh, it is there around the earth then uh, everything that comes like the meteors and all if they fall towards earth then they will be burned into the uh, into this uh, resisting uh, uh, layers of atmosphere so they will not reach up to the ground but on the moon everything will hit hit you hard and directly so if the astronauts would be there on the lunar surface so they may be at risk and these uh, uh, cosmic rays and all these are also directly hitting the surface there so that's a risky game so emergency system 
and it's a pyramid like structure and European Space Agency has actually developed that and NASA will be using that so it's a pyramid like uh, evacuation system assembly okay you can see that they are doing these trials on the oceanic surface because ocean surface is more like the moon's surface so that's the case and uh, NASA's 2024 moon mission will be there so they need to test this evacuation system assembly and uh, you see any kind of uh, accident if that happens then within minutes even a single astronaut can use this system and uh, they can assemble it and they will uh, take the injured person to the nearby pressurized lander system there so that's the case next dragonfly mission again from science and technology dragonfly mission uh, was in news and it was regarding the saturn planet but not directly the saturn planet it is actually the moon of saturn planet and that is the titan the biggest moon of saturn but it is not the biggest in solar system biggest in solar system is the ganymede and ganymede is a moon of jupiter jupiter has 79 moons and uh, the ganymede is the biggest one so titan is not the biggest moon in the solar system this is wrong second they have found what is the issue what is the context there they have found uh, liquid lakes there but that liquid is not water it is hydrocarbon it may be methane ethylene or something like that and uh, you see uh, many uh, unique bacteria or microbes they have found on earth also which can survive without oxygen maybe they are surviving on sulfur or something like that so sulfur bacteria are also there so these kind of uh, life forms can be found there and you see this kind of lake or something like that that can be a same primordial soup which used to be there billions of years ba year back uh, uh, on the earth when the life started so some basic uh, amino acid units and all they were started in that primordial soup and those kind of conditions are no more there on earth but they can be there on this uh, titan moon so it's more like uh, earth's condition because nitrogen is prevalent on on the on the atmosphere of a titan and uh, we have 78 percent of uh, nitrogen on earth and there it is more than 90 percent but the density is too much but these lakes and oceans of uh, liquid hydrocarbon these are found near the north pole and they can be something of a uh, uh, great information so they, they will have to look up about that so this dragonfly mission will go there it's like a drone like uh, a rover craft it's not a rover actually rover is like a cart and it has uh, these uh, tires and all metallic tires and all and they, they, that moves on the surface like the curiosity rover of uh, uh, mars uh, sorry uh, yes on the mars the curiosity rover by nasa that is moving and since the uh, last uh, seven years it has been moving there so it's not like that it will be a drone like structure it will have vertical landing and vertical uh, lift off from there so that's the case and uh, national aeronautics and space administration nasa the full form of nasa recently announced its plan to launch dragonfly drone helicopter to saturn's largest moon titan in search of building blocks of life because as i told you these lakes can be the primordial soup and those kind of conditions which were uh, there on uh, earth in the starting of the life phase so that those can be found there so we are going there and uh, actually any no uh, manned mission will it will be it is only going to be the drone and that uh, particular drone like aircraft it will be launched in 2026 and it will take eight years to reach there and in 2034 it will reach uh, on the titan surface so it will take a lot of time as we know these are far far away uh, areas in the solar system and these are very interesting and mysterious planets like jupiter and titan extremely mysterious these are we, we have very little regarding that we have not approached their uh, surfaces and we do not know anything about their surface but the basic composition of those planets that much we know like the uh, unique conditions extreme uh, pressure which is there you see on the jupiter there are layers of uh, uh, that uh, diamonds uh, can be found because extreme pressure is there so these kind of mysterious things are there so titan is having similar conditions like earth not almost uh, uh, similar but uh, many similar conditions are there like their atmosphere and as i told you nitrogen is prevalent there, pre prevalent there so these extraterrestrial habitability this is the aim that we are taking here and that can be present on the saturn's moon there and uh, vertical takeoff and landing will happen there as this is the uh, subject of astrobiology because in the space if something is uh, relatable with the 
and living organisms and also it is the case of astrobiology so uh, this we are doing and uh, many informations we can find there on the titan and john hopkins applied physics laboratory ha had given this proposal in 2017 and they know about this information for a very long time for many years they know this uh, uh, thing that liquid lakes are there on titan and this is the only place apart from earth in the solar system where these liquid systems are found okay so it's a new frontiers program of nasa that is going on and the new horizon spacecraft that took picture of pluto the heart shaped picture and that was also by new horizons and new horizons was one of the program of new frontiers program and this dragonfly is also under it and it would be the fourth mission under the new frontiers program of nasa so that's the case and this is a dragonfly drone aircraft and this will look like that and this will have a landing like this and this can have a vertical lift off from here so that's the case a vertical take off not the lift off okay and you can read all these details are given now uh upsc may ask you about some uh, moons and these are very unique moons titan as i told you second largest in the solar system and the largest for saturn 90 percent atmosphere is mainly nitrogen and seas and lakes on its surface filled with liquid hydrocarbon it is the only body other than earth where uh, these are found in solar system ganymede jupiter's uh, uh, largest moon among its 79 moons and uh, it is so huge that uh, its uh, diameter is more than 5000 kilometers and it has its own magnetic field so that's that shows that how uh, huge it uh, is it and uh, it was found by galileo galilei in 1610 so that may be asked these, these details are very much important okay and some amount of oxygen molecules are also found in the atmosphere of ganymede so that's very very important next callisto very uh, inactive kind of uh, moon the farthest away from uh, jupiter and it has not has any geological activity but if we talk about the io io is the most active body after earth because consistently there are volcanic ac activities and every time many radioactive material is uh, being spewed uh, by this uh, moon and that is trapped by the jupiter's magnetic field and it creates a, a different kind of a, a unique system where these radioactive material which are uh, which are uh, uh, by this io moon and they are trapped into jupiter's system and that creates a unique uh, uh, situation where uh, these are like uh, small cannonballs and these are radioactive materials and that makes the atmosphere of uh, this uh, uh, this jupiter uh, planet very dangerous and that's why it, it's a major hindrance there and uh, uh, you should read about all these details you should read about the low and the jupiter's relation and very unique one and the uh, sulfur dioxide is the gas that is found in the atmosphere there and many active volcanic sites are there uh, consistently it is uh, uh, fuming the lava there next question is regarding purchasing managers index i told you about that in the morning lesson and as i told you it's an indicator of business activity mainly in the economy it's a macro measure and both in the manufacturing field and the services sector in both the sectors it is giving some basic information not any robust data but it is telling you that uh, how the economy is moving and what kind of uh, uh, progress uh, is there in the manufacturing and the services sector so every month on first date uh, uh, this is released so it is not every year before the budget this is wrong first is correct third is again wrong because a score above 50 that tells that it's a expansionary phase means the high growth is there in the economy high growth is there and a score below 50 it's a contract uh, it's a contractory phase and uh, that means that uh, economy is towards a decline and the manufacturing sector and the services sales sector they are not giving any good growth so they are in a way contracting so one only is the answer here b is the answer and you can read here it is calculated separately for the manufacturing and the services sector but the composite index is uh, constructed there and it tells about these two important areas key indicators they are uh, uh, actually observed by many investors also and it is giving you a basic thing about the business activity in the economy and uh, till the time other robust data are available 
till that time in the month it gives you a kind of a direction of the economy so that's very much important okay it's a good indicator next features associated with indian ocean realm you see indian ocean has become a very important area for us and we are focusing a lot here not only india all the countries which are uh, uh, situated around this indian ocean realm all are active here usa has a unique interest here because it wants to counter china there it doesn't want the presence of china in the indian ocean region because it's a very important area and maximum uh, amount of uh, trade is going through this uh, region so america wants its all presence there digo garcia is there in the indian ocean south to india and uh, there it has its own uh, basis so aria act america has brought in december 18 asia reassurance initiative act and under that it has renamed the the pacific region as indo-pacific and uh, they are adding the name as indo here so they are giving importance to india but there is a interest there that they want to uh, block china here and they want to take help of india so that's why it's aria act so it is also associated with the indian ocean realm and uh, iprd the important regional dialogue and that is also associated with that quad group i have told you many times india japan australia and usa these four countries are there in uh, quadrilateral group here and uh, it was recently revived and uh, that's important again related to indian ocean region and we have announced that external affairs ministry would have an indo-pacific wing so this quad group these indian ocean uh, 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 rim association and these asean activities and all these things we will uh, take under the indo-pacific uh, wing framework so that's very very important indian ocean naval symposium that is going on since uh, uh, last 10 years and uh, we have invited always all these uh, maritime partners and all they they share their informations and they share their uh, uh, abilities and uh, give important uh, opportunity informations so that's that's the thing so all are associated with associated with the indian ocean realm okay geographically indo-pacific refers to the indian and pacific oceans uh, and uh, between the east coast of africa and the american west coast and economic and strategic community uh, you can subscribe to here and uh, this was uh, uh, discussed in the shangri-la dialogue also shangri-la dialogue is the first security dialogue in asia shangri-la is a hotel in singapore and there it was started in 2001 so uh, in the last meet uh, of shangri-la dialogue prime minister modi also talked about this issue that indo-pacific has become so important and it is getting a lot of uh, attention and attraction there so india's act east policy is very much active here in this indian ocean region indian ocean naval symposium as i told you that's very much important and we are engaging with the regional countries like australia new zealand republic of korea all are taking uh, part here they are very much active in the india pacific you know, island cooperation so that's the case and the next iprd indo-pacific regional dialogue it is uh, the initiative organized by national maritime foundation and that is the navy's uh, knowledge partner india indian navy's knowledge partner national maritime foundation and they are reviewing the india's opportunities and the challenges in the indo-pacific region and these basic themes were there in the first edition first edition was there in 2018 and in 2019 march second uh, edition happened in new delhi in the manisha center so iprd is new and it's very important and important basic themes are related to connectivity models pan regional challenges and growth opportunities and shift to the newer forms of trades and the industrial uh, revolution 4.0 that is also the important theme so you can see sagar mala the important focus for india and the transition from a blue, blue brown economy to a blue economy we want to tap the potential of maritime area so we want the blue economy benefits that we can tap there and that's the case and that these were important five fresh themes uh, in second edition of iprd okay indian ocean naval symposium started in february 2008 and it is going on uh, on an annual basis and we inviting all these countries every year quad group revived in 2017 after 10 years because uh, in 2007 it was started by four countries india japan usa and australia these four like-minded countries because uh, they are more in a uh, particular group of uh, Americas, you may say. So, because US is the 
most important country in this group and then japan then uh, india and then australia so these four are there and they are uh, consistently involved in the malabar exercise also these three countries india japan and usa australia also wants to get in there in the malabar exercise but uh, uh, they are waiting for that and quadrilateral security dialogue that is the quad group okay that's important you can read all the details in the pdf next question is regarding kaziranga national park recently two uh, save the cases of poaching there in uh, uh, kaziranga national park for indian uh, great indian rhinoceros the one horned rhinoceros just to save it 80 member task force has been created and they will be very much active male females both will be there okay so it's a word heritage site we all know but you see you have to read the sentences very carefully it says that two-thirds of the world rhinoceroses they are there in kaziranga national park this is wrong actually uh, uh, what would be the right right thing to say right thing would be two-third of indian uh, rhinoceros or the one horned rhinoceros their two-third population is there in kaziranga national park because it is also there in the orang national park that is also called mini kaziranga and in uh, other areas also they are found so two-third population of the indian one horned rhinoceros is there in this word hit is site this is for sure a word hit is site so this is wrong second there used to be a highest density of tigers in 2006 it was declared as the tiger reserve and highest tiger density was found there but when the orang national park it became the 49th uh, tiger reserve then uh, the highest density is now with orang national park which is called mini kaziranga okay so Brahmaputra river is flowing on the south bank. Kaziranga is located on the north bank. Orang National Park is uh, located. So Orang is there on the north bank. So this is again wrong. Third, Indian rhinoceros, uh, it's native to Indian subcontinent. That is correct. Listed at, as critically endangered, this is wrong. It is just vulnerable on the IUCN red list category. And according to the latest census, 2314 is the population. So that's the case and all are wrong here. So correct would be D none okay you can read the details it's also a uh, important bird area declared by bird life international and important uh, animals flora fauna both are uh, uh, found here these are mentioned and now the highest tiger density is with orang national park that is also in assam and tropical bro uh, uh, moist broadleaf forest they are found there because it's a very important area assam and uh, there is no uh, dearth of uh, water availability so tropical moist and sometimes very dense forests are also found here major rivers uh, including brahmaputra is flowing it is crisscrossing this uh, important area so that's the case okay nagao district and golaga district mainly the golaga district is there where uh, this is located and it is indian uh, great indian one horned rhinoceros and this is the pygmy hog it is a critically endangered animal which is uniquely found in orang national park so Orang National Park is famous for this pygmy hog and the, the population of Indian rhinoceros is also found in the Orang National Park. So that's the case. And one more interesting detail, Lord Curzon, the uh, former uh, Viceroy of India, he is also associated, he was actually associated with this uh, formation of uh, Kaziranga Reserved Forest because uh, his wife Mary Curzon, she went there and she did not uh, find uh, a single uh, uh, rhinoceros there. So she complained about that and then Lord Curzon ordered this and they declared it as a reserved forest area and they uh, tried to conserve this animal there. So that was the case and that's why UPSC may ask you that uh, which is the Viceroy that is associated with Kaziranga National Park. Lord Curzon infamous for Bengal partition. Thanks Lord Keith.